Mr. Jim, standing opposite Tom Selleck and Donnie Wahlberg. Amy comes from an activist family. She considers herself a social justice advocate, a feminist, a humanitarian, and she's got reason to have those thoughts. She lived much of her early life in the Middle East. There she spent time in refugee camps. Can you imagine? And you can imagine also how that influenced her worldview. After the genocide in Rwanda in 1994, Amy traveled with World Vision to aid in the relief efforts. So her life experience fed the passion that you'll see tonight, her passion to advocate for social justice here at home. Amy now serves on the board of the Hearts of Gold. That group provides support for homeless mothers and children. She's active with Habitat for Humanity. She's a founder of Space, a neighborhood organization in New York, which advocates for the local Chinatown and LES communities. So she's passionate about human rights in a big way. Amy has published an essay in Gettysburg Replies, in which she re-examines, this is so interesting, she re-examines Lincoln's Gettysburg Address in terms of women's solidarity. She's also active in Equality Now, as I mentioned, and Time's Up, and the Me Too movement. Having lost her childhood friend to chronic fatigue syndrome, Amy's become a passionate advocate for raising awareness about that terrible illness. She's now creating a foundation for her friend called Friends of Ann Barrett. Please welcome to the stage this year's recipient for the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Award for Gender Equality, someone who deserves all of your love, Amy Carlson. <laughs> continue to inspire me. I'm humbled to be before this lovely audience, including my 11-year-old daughter, Lila, who is here tonight. <laughs> and accepting an award for gender equality is a true honor. In my lifetime, I've watched this human issue grow significantly in importance. And note I say a human issue, because gender equality isn't just a women's issue. If you look at the statistics, you'll see that everyone benefits when women are equal. The writer Chimamanda and Ngozi Adichie said, the whole goal of feminism is to become redundant. My dream is for a world where we won't have to call, I won't have to call myself a feminist because there will be gender justice. And to get there, there has to be a mass movement. Lately, I've watched the awareness of sexism increase in strength, not only in the national discourse, but also in the growth of the Me Too movement and Time's Up movements, as well as changes to our collective awareness that are as simple as the way we use language. The pain and real life repercussions of sexism are finally being addressed as we make great strides in this long, long march toward equality. But we aren't nearly done, and I promise you, Lila, that we intend to be the cleanup crew because you deserve to grow up in a world that values women and people of all genders equally. I come from a family that is proudly and profoundly American. My parents, who are also here tonight, were the first in their families to earn a four-year degree. And as they advanced in life, they honored the values their parents had instilled in them. As a young girl, I remember my father quoting Muhammad Ali, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. In our home, if something needed to be done and your hands were empty, then that job fell to you. And that attitude has kept me involved in my neighborhood and in the larger world community. My philosophy has always been simple. If not me, then who? <laughs> On a side note, I've always been fascinated with this thing called the bystander effect, which many of you might have heard of. It's the idea that 
The more people that are present in a time of need, the longer it takes for that need to be met because everyone's waiting for someone else, someone else to act first. But if you're conscious of the bystander effect, you can avoid it by following your humanistic impulses and acting. And with so much at stake in today's world, we must all resolve to give up our status as bystanders and support our fellow humans. If not me, then who? This question carried me to many places. It led me to a uh, humanitarian mission in Rwanda after the 1994 genocide. It has taken me to women's builds, organized by Habitat for Humanity, and in many ways it's the reason I find myself here tonight. The fight for gender equality affects every dimension of our society and culture. I mean, if you look at Serena Williams' experiences during the U.S. Open, when women get angry, we're dismissed as hysterical, and when men do, they're outspoken. That struggle has life and death implications when it comes to public health. Tonight, I'm honored to have the opportunity to shine a light on a highly misunderstood disease, myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is also known by the trivializing subtitle chronic fatigue. I can't even say it. Chronic fatigue syndrome. The other, the other way is much harder. ME is a debilitating neuroimmune disease recognized by the World Health Organization since 1969. From the neurological to the cardiovascular, ME affects nearly every system in the body. Exertion makes symptoms worse and can result in a near paralytic crash of all body functions. ME sufferers feel as if they've been poisoned. A quality of life study in Denmark found that among people living with a range of diseases from lung cancer and multiple sclerosis to stroke and heart failure, those with ME scored the lowest in quality of life. And in case you're wondering how ME relates to gender equality, well, 80% of those who suffer its effects are women. Last year, ME took one of my best friends from childhood, Ann Berry. In fact, it took Ann from me long before it ended her life. In the years before she died, Anne's quality of life was so compromised by Emmy that she was unable to work, travel, or experience the simple pleasures we shared. Anne was a great lover of life, a spontaneous dancer, and full of joy. Emmy took that from her. So I have a vendetta against Emmy. And I have vowed, alongside another beloved childhood friend, Connie Bain, who's here tonight also with Anne's sisters, Ellen and Jill, to raise awareness and funding for ME, which currently affects an estimated 2.5 million people in America. In fact, in my home state of Illinois, there are more than 100,000 cases of ME and not one single doctor who is able to treat ME effectively. And despite the millions who suffer with no end in sight, federal spending on research is actually expected to decrease this year. Dollar per dollar, it's funded at the level of hay fever. And compared with other debilitating diseases like MS, which receives $400 a year per patient in research and funding, ME patients receive between three and five dollars. Needless to say, there's a tremendous amount of work to be done, but after Ann died, Connie and I looked at each other and we said, if not us, then who? And we launched our action and awareness campaign with the screening of the film Unrest by the brilliant Jen Brea. It's an incredible documentary. And followed that up with a trip to Washington with Anne's sister Ellen to lobby with the group SALT MECFS initiative. The low awareness around ME illustrates how issues of gender equality affect women's lives on so many different levels, including our health. This is particularly true among African American women and other women of color whose health issues have been marginalized for far too long. But there are some good news to report. There are two pieces of legislation pending in the Senate that sp uh, focus specifically on issues around women's health. And can you guess the gender of the people who introduced them? That's right, it's Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. She introduced, she's introduced the Moms Act and also the Maternal Care Act, which is sponsored by Senator Kamala Harris of California. So you see, Lila, women are working on many different capacities as leaders, volunteers, artists, and philanthropists to change the world you're inheriting for the better. Because if not now, 
then when? And if not me, then who? Like the great Muhammad Ali, I believe that work and service to others is not only the rent for our rooms here on earth, but it's also the food that sustains and enriches our souls. So on behalf of Connie, Ellen, Jill, and Lila, in memory of Ann Berry, I want to thank you for this amazing award. Woo!